Hey everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, we're going to look at another tree of Candaces. We're in the PSGF today. It's 34 degrees inside, 34.8, so we're hovering up close to 35. 27 outside. Gray sky, again, we've had so much gray that the uh, power source, you know, the solar panel, is not keeping that thing juiced up enough. So I've had it plugged in a little bit. So a quick update on the PSGF. As I've said before, and I think an update, more power, bigger power station, and more panels. But I'm not somewhere in a desert island or up on a piece of land yet, so I don't have to be completely self-sustained quite yet. So we rely on good old electricity from the grid. Uh, but hopefully we'll solve those issues as we continue to work on the PSGF. Today though, um, we got a little update for you. I've been working on my grape wood project. We'll talk about that. But first, let's take a peek at a tree. It's all about the trees, right? And of course, you all know that I love forests and one of the uh, trees or forest that I got recently was from Candace. Here is the tree, or shall I say the forest, from Candace. So I continue to get a lot of questions about Candace and hey Dave, how's Candace doing? And she is doing great everybody. I'll repeat the message I've shared before. Um, she is one busy person. So um, she does a lot of traveling and she's busy with uh, a job. I think her job is actually changing. I'm going to go through a move from one side of the Eau Claire, Wisconsin area to another and um, she's just super, super busy and she was not able to care for the trees that you have seen on my channel, like this forest right here, the way she wants to, knowing that um, they're probably going to have uh, some issues if someone's not taking care of them for her. So here I have one of her big forests that she's put together and I'm a forest guy. I really like the forest and I kind of want to focus and concentrate most of my bonsai efforts now and in the future on forests. Um, it's not to say that I'm going to continue to work on some really nice uh, bonsai trees that are just one tree, but I am really looking forward uh, to all of these forests. They remind me of growing up and going into forests. One of my dreams with a forest planting in the near future is Many years ago on a hunting trip with my father, as I clean up this forest floor, but one of the hunting trips, we were in southeastern Minnesota in what's known as the Whitewater, uh, I believe, National Park or White, Whitewater Regional Park. But this Whitewater Park is very hilly down in there, some great topography, harder to do, uh, you know, hunting and you're, you really get a workout climbing. But I loved the, the forest. And one of my favorite trips down there had nothing to do with deer. I got out of my stand because I was a little bit antsy, so I thought I would make a drive in the forest. Came across this pine forest that was out of this world. When you're sitting in a forest of pine trees and there's a small breeze and there's, uh, you know, it's fall, maybe even a coat of snow on the ground. Um, I just remember sitting there in such peace and solitude with the pine boughs just, just barely rustling in the, in the wind. Um, it was fantastic. So I do love forests, and they conjure up all kinds of memories for me, and that's why I do them in my bonsai art. So here we have a Shimpaku juniper forest that um, Candace started a couple of years ago. Now I believe the last time she worked on this might have been in the hot, hot summer of 2022. Because when she released this video, the most recent video that I found on her channel of this, she was putting this wire on and styling it, but it couldn't have been 23 because this was released a year ago, which would have been about December or January, for it's January now. And so she probably worked on it in the summer of 22 and then released it that fall, winter, um, late winter, or uh, the January part of the new, new year of 23. So I believe this is about a year and a half of growth from when she did that video. So I'll also put a link to that video if you want to go check out Candace's interpretation of this forest. So now it came from her house to mine. I had it in my cold frame uh, cabin style over there. And um, I'm just gonna take a peek because I haven't even looked at this thing yet since I've had it. And what I am noticing about some of these trees 
is the wire that she set a year and a half ago is definitely cutting in. So the first uh, thing for me to do is to get rid of this wire on these trees and give them um, a fresh new start for the new spring. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take off the wire, keep looking at the forest as I do that, and we'll come up with a plan. All the wire is off of the tree forest except for the uh, primary tree, the mother tree, if you will. You've heard me talk about the mother tree. So that one still has some wire on it. Um, and so I thought I would show you uh, kind of uh, unwiring a tree. Now, of course, you can do a couple of different things. You can use your wire cutter and you need a nice uh, blunt wire cutter that doesn't have big tips. So it just cuts the wire, not the tree. So when you wire a tree or you unwire a tree, you have to use two hands. So you have one hand for the wire and one hand for the tree or the branch that you're wiring. And so you want to be able to have a, a nice stable connection. So my left hand has the wire, my right hand pinches the tree branch, and now I can wrap this wire around without yanking on the tree. Notice how the tree is relatively still, and I'm wrapping it around trying to get this off. Now, I got another small wire in there. We've got some secondary wire, so I have to take that off first. Pinch, and I can wrap around and pinch down lower and wrap around and not break these little tiny new growth buds over here as well. We've got all this little growth right here. Boom, boom, and boom. Those are all back buds. That could be the future of this tree. All this could be gone and that could be the future of the tree right there and there and down here. So we, want, we don't want to wreck that either. So we're just going to grab this tree and pinch it and wrap it around. And now we have one more wire to contend with over here um, so we can make sure we can get the bigger wire off after. So let me grab this one real quick. And again, even with this second wire here now, I'm holding with my right hand as I untwist. There we go. And then I can finish this big tree here, or at least the next section here. Oop, a little, little bit of wire scars there too, so it was growing in there. So this was thickening up real nice. What a nice tree. There we go. So we have a forest that has been dewired. And there are some wire scars, but again, if you have worked with pines and junipers, the fir trees, pines especially, these scars in a couple years will be completely gone. You'll never know that this had uh, wires on it. Um, your deciduous trees, much more sensitive. Your tropical trees, those scars can be on there for life or uh, most of the life or many, many years. And now I can come down here and I'm still picking out some weeds from the summer, excuse me, the summer growth. There's some weed structures here. Now, we have a forest that Candace had something in mind. She did a great job of explaining what she was doing in her video, how she wanted these uh, trees to kind of start this way, swoop up a little bit, and then just kind of come crashing this way. And they get all real twisty and gnarly down here. She also thought she could use these as some uh, grafting materials for some of her other trees, which could always be done. A beautiful set of cuttings from um, a juniper, a shimpaku juniper. All of these could be yanked out in a couple of years and made into um, you know, individual trees with some really fun movement now, so pretty cool. Most forests, we typically have more straight up and down, formal uprights, informal uprights, you know, maybe this kind of movement, maybe this kind of movement, and this gets a little bit more different. And so again, some people like to try new things and experiment, and that is so cool. I don't know what I'm going to do with this forest at the moment. It has kind of that conical shape here with the big tree here, although it's a little tall compared to the other ones. But, and she had this pretty, uh, pretty thinned out when she uh, first cut this, so it's done a nice job of cutting back. And we can go ahead and cut this tree now, uh, trim these trees up, uh, get rid of some of these lever leaders for maybe some other leaders, um, or we could let them shoot out to thicken up the trunk this year. We can make all kinds of different decisions here. So I want to make sure that it's healthy in here and all these trees are where they need to be. Um, it's in good shape, not frozen because it's been in the uh, cabin cold frame. 
So I'm going to take a look at the tree, give it a couple of spins, and we'll see what kind of work we might do to Candace's Shimpaku Forest. My challenge with this tree is some of the uh, floppiness of the tree. Um, this tree is a little loose here. I might need to put some stones there to hold those secure. Um, I could tampen down a little bit more soil in here, some of, some of my smalls to just make sure that they have a good hold. I mean, most of the trees are fine. We have a couple of wobbly ones. Now it's from unwiring and digging up some roots as well, kind of made these more loosey-goosey. Um, and so I have to figure out what I want to do for work on these trees. And maybe I just let them shoot out growth for one more season in my backyard. Like this tree right here, I'm not sure if it was meant to be down low like this. It might have been bumped in the trans transition because look, this looks a little bit more like it's in line with the forest, but it wants to do that, which is kind of natural. You know, somehow Mother Nature blew this one over a little bit or who knows. So I would need a stone on here of some sort. I don't have any stones in here with me to kind of keep this one back up here in that, in that position. It's, it's planted really close to the edge of this mica pot. But again, if that's the front of the, of the forest, yeah, that, that makes more sense up there than down there. But it is realistic. Uh, maybe that could become the raft. <laughs> um, I think we don't want to have the raft kind of in the front right or left where you can just see the tree that's been downed and have it grow up. But that's what I could do. I could lean some of these uh, smaller trees down. I could, I could lean this tree down maybe and have a couple of trees shoot up as, as uh, bran uh, branches shoot up as trees. Um, and I could, maybe, I could maybe move these two out of here and put them in another pot. Don't cut the roots, you know, because this isn't the right time to repot, but I would just do kind of a slip pot and I could bend this down and touch the ground with it. Or we could do that with this one right here and twist it around and let, let some branches start to grow as a forest, a tree downed in the forest. Now you'd have to get rid of that tree then too. So I'm not sure what to do with this guy right now. So what I think I will do is take some of these uh, trees like this one right here, and I will just trim them up a little bit and get them ready for a nice push in the new season. So cut off some of the tips, See if I can encourage certain direction of growth here. Um, this guy right here has a nice back bud right here by my hand. There's a nice back bud right there, so that could be the future of this tree if things don't work out. So that's, uh, that's the tree I'll kind of focus on first. And again, we got a real bushy tip here, a lot of growth there. We can get rid of that tip a little bit and spread the, spread, spread the wealth is what I'm trying to say. You can tell it's a little colder out here. I'm starting to, starting to mix all my words. Get that one out of there. Now as we look at this tree right here, this is another great example of back budding. So look right in here. Back budding, back budding, back budding. All of this tree can be gone someday. So that's when you've got one tree in a bonsai pot and you're trying to thicken up that trunk and get the truck, uh, the uh, branches down where you want them with some back budding. That's a good example of that right here. Buds, buds, buds. So I can trim this tree a little bit for sure and know that that's going to start growing some new growth uh, in those areas. I'm just going to cut this whole tip right off right there. These are a couple of branches close together, so I want to get, get that gone. We have a weaker branch here. Not sure which one of those are going to survive. But again, this is my, this is my future of the tree right here. Future of that branch. I can cut that tip off. I'll cut that downward facing branch here, this one as well. Maybe cut this and cut this tip off a little bit more. So this first tree, I just thinned out a little bit. We just got rid of some of the growth, some of the thickness rather, you know. And then we've got these, this little bud back here and these three buds back here. That tree's going to just do what it's going to do and that'll be a fine tree. This one I'm not sure what we're going to do. It's already leaning down. We might make a raft out of that one. This one we're going to cut this tip off right here. And we're going to see. This is kind of a fun tree, but it's super big. We've got a little bit of back budding back here. So there's a bit of back budding right here by the scissors tip and back here. So there's back budding on that dirt branch, which is super nice to see. 
That right there is plenty of green to support these back buds back there, and we've got some nice curvy movement. We'll see where that growth is. And then this has some fun, interesting movement, and again, it's curving this way. The one thing that um, I'll show you too about back budding that's nice is that this tree is leaning this way and it had no branches on here. Now, I don't know if that was on purpose in Candace's part. We also oftentimes don't like branches on the inside of curves, but this is where the wind brought this forest. But look at the back buds right here. Back bud, back bud, back bud, back bud. These are all back buds for this tree. Again, if I cut this tree right here, that would be the future of the tree. But please remember, if I cut all of this green foliage off of a, a tree like this, all of that probably could die right off, right? We can't cut too much of our conifers down, especially with pines. Thinning out the tips of these trees, making them less thick and bulky, right there, less thick and bulky, to look more like this, little thin for the sun to get in there. When this thing's ready to wake up, this will start shooting out all kinds of new growth. I'm gonna cut back right here, even thinner, I just have these two. It was kind of three here and now we have these two. So there I just cut that down to size as well. And this guy right here, we can cut this tip off as I said. We could almost put that in the ground for a, a cutting. I don't know if that would take. I've only done junipers once. It was a shimpaco, shimpaco juniper, and I did get, I did get growth from that shimpaco. We've had a lot of trouble in the Minnesota Bonsai Society with shimpakus and junipers in general with cold frame storage and um, kind of a fungal issue in the spring. So you've got to watch those carefully in your cold frames and make sure you're not over watering and, and, and keeping that cold frame so moist that it just, uh, we have issues with some fungal things. So there we go. I didn't touch the leaning down tree yet, but we've got that tree and that tree all, all trimmed up. I'm going to work on the other ones and make a few more decisions. So as we continue to work on the tree here, cleaning out, making this tree have a lot of light to be able to get to all these branches and promote the new growth. I've got most of the trees kind of where I want them now, just trimmed up. I want to show you this really nice example of back budding right there. Can you see right there everybody below my frizzer? Fr fr frizzer? My scissors! Look at that. Look at that back budding right there in the armpit of those two branches. That is quality back budding. That shows that this tree is in good shape. That is awesome. I'm gonna take this thicker chunk off here. We got the smaller growth right there. We've got some funky trees to work with here. We've got some interesting shapes. And we've got this tree back here. Now look at this. I trimmed this, trimmed this one up during kind of the fast motion stuff. Or no, this isn't the one I trimmed. This is the one we just have back here that we can maybe make into a raft like down here. Um, we can even cut this tip off right there. And then we can have this hit the ground in a couple of spots and see if this can almost be like a bridge and have some branches kind of grow up this way. We could wire that up if we had to. Um, yeah, uh, we could we could make do something with this tree possibly along the back of the forest. And then the other one I was thinking about, this one over here. So we got this skinny one here that's got some great bend to it and we'll make it see if we can angle it here to grow more up. And so it will, uh, you know, encourage upgrowth. While this one down here, look at this funky one that kind of maybe did fall down somehow. I can manipulate it this way. And look, I can separate this into two directions here, one at the edge and one kind of in there. And then I can get three or four trees in here to grow up for this back part of the forest from a raft here. Oh, I think that's kind of cool. I think I'm gonna do that. So after inspecting the pot, there's a couple of big holes in the middle, but not towards the end. So I couldn't stick a wire in there to get the good pressure to hold this down. So it would have to be some kind of heavy rock structure to kind of hold this down, I think. Um, so here's the thing with a raft. For a raft to hold, a lot of people will bend the trees over into the soil and you'll scar the bottom of the tree. You'll scar it a little bit and then you'll have it touching the soil and then your uh, roots will start to uh, form down there and it'll hold that tree into the ground and the trees will start to grow up. Now, this time of year, not a good time for me to do that. Um, 
if this was March, I would give it a try, but it's only January. Things won't be warming up or waking up, I should say, in the PSGF until late February, early March, if my guess is right. Um, and so uh, I really can't do that till March. So in the meantime, I could force these trees to the ground with some rocks, and then you just hope, just like nature would, roots would just start to form naturally through the bark. And that can happen as well. Sometimes when you get a uh, juniper tree from the nursery stores, um, you get the nursery stock, and you've got all kinds of branches that are growing like this uh, on some of those creepy crawler junipers, and the main trunk is there, but then also there's a branch that's really close to the soil this way, and you discover there's a root underneath that's growing into the pot as well, and no one scored that. So I can put a couple of rocks on here, and we can try that, and then if it doesn't take, no harm, no foul, but the tree will already be bent down and forced to grow this way, and then we can just kind of make some changes with, again, repots or future work. I have my bonsai pot of rocks here of various sizes, and we're gonna see if we can put some of these in a strategic place where it's gonna really hold this down and create a potential raft style without blocking too much of the growth. So right off the bat, I think this tree just needs a heavy down right here. There we go. And then the, the raft could even be lower in the tree tips, right? We got this kind of bridge on this one. So I think what I want to do is hold it to the ground with this kind of flat, maybe rounded tip here is better. And it just, we, we, it's like we need a heavier rock there. There we go. And so this right here could be one of the trees from this raft, and this one could curve up and grow up towards the sun. This one could grow up and go towards the sun. We could even like shimmy a rock underneath here right there, which I'll do. I'll shimmy a rock right here, and now it holds that tree up right there. So that branch can grow up, this branch can grow up, this can start to curve up. Maybe another small branch underneath this, another rock underneath this branch, there you go. And that one, we'll see what happens. Okay, so there's that side. And then over here, can I get a kind of a robust rock over here to just crash this one down to the ground? There you go. There we go. And then we have two different rocks in here, or two different uh, branches in here that I can separate with a rock right there. And then that's kind of touching the ground already, but I want to get, I want to get a little more weight down on here. Right there. So there's a tree in here, hard to see, little tree in there and this tree right here growing up. And then we've got this part of it right here. We have one, two, three, four, five trees. This one's pretty straight up, I like that one. I think that needs a little weight on it though back there. So that goes down in the ground. And there's a couple little trees in there too. We're just going to let that sit right there. I'm going to have to carefully bring that to the uh, cabin cold frame. Or you know what? Let's just leave it right there. How fantastic. Hey, so the update today is uh, two things. One, there's a whole bunch of wood in the cabin cold frame. Let me show you that first. So the pink stuff on the lower windows with the heat on the sunny days were shrinking a little bit. So they're just kind of falling on the trees. So I got a thin piece of plywood here to kind of put those in uh, these three bottom windows. So it's holding it in place. It's yet another layer of insulation. It's fairly tight on here uh, on most of the sides. And so it's keeping this uh, really regulated. This cold frame has been about 34 degrees nonstop for about two weeks with all the gray and the off and on here going on when it's been plugged in once in a while. So this is an addition to the PSGF to keep this even more regulated and keep that insulation from just falling over the trees. My second update for today is down in the plant room. So I worked on the grape wood today. So first I had to clean off the grape wood. So I took my metal brush and I kind of scraped it on the inside and the outside and made sure I got all the crumbs and pieces parts that I don't want on there when I go ahead and put on the new resin. So I was able to pick up some resin from uh, the good old Google. You know, I just searched it and Amazon had uh, some great resin that was more um, from a viewer comment. He, they said, hey Dave, try some jewelry grade um, uh, of the of the epoxy jewelry grade because it's gonna be a lot tougher. So I bought a couple of bottles, the A and the B, the one and the two, flipped it upside down, 
and I was able to give that a nice layer of the epoxy. Now that takes about four hours to dry, so it's sticky to the touch. But once it was four hours dried and sticky, I, did, uh, I was able to pick it up, kind of flip it around, and then I was able to add that layer of Flex Seal. So Flex Seal is kind of that rubber spray coating. So that's on the inside of the grape wood, and the epoxy is on the outside. And they're just gonna dry now for 12 hours. And once it's 12 hours, um, it'll be really nice. I can kind of put it anywhere. It's over 24 hours later, and uh, my grape wood is ready for plants. Now I need some uh, screenage here for some drain screens, but there you go. There's the underneath side, kind of that side as we look at the pot. If you flip it over to that side, you could have either side the front of this pot. I think I've always preferred this texture for the front. So there you go, all shined up and really pretty. And in black, that's that uh, flex seal, kind of rubber seal with some drainage holes here. So it got a little weak after a couple years outside. This should last a couple more years and we'll get some trees into here. Not sure what we're gonna put in there yet, um, but uh, it'll be some kind of tropical plant so I can bring it into my plant room in the winter time. And so it'll be in here and I can enjoy it because it's such a pretty uh, unique pot to look at. I do love it. So that's gonna wrap it up for another show. But before we go, I wanna talk a little bit about Shinrin Yoku. So because I, need to look at cheat sheets because I can't remember everything's verbatim. I just wanted to share a couple more things from you about this Shinrin Yoku. So again, Shinrin Yoku refers to, well, we call it uh, forest bathing. So um, this was coined by the Japanese government in 1982 um, based on ancient Shinto and Buddhist practices. It's to let nature into our body through all five senses. So, and this is all on page 19 of the Nature Fix. Japan has over 48 official forest therapy trails. So in Japan, you can go to a trail that's forest therapy. They want over 100 in the next 10 years. So remember, we're supposed to slow down and we're supposed to fully be immersed in nature. So today's Shinrin Yoku, we're going to go to one of my favorite trips when I went to the Redwoods a few years back. And so walking amongst the redwoods was the most amazing Shinrin Yoku I probably experienced in my lifetime. If you can get out there, I highly recommend it. So here are the redwood forests, a little Shinrin Yoku as we say goodbye. Hey, take care of you, take care of your bonsai, and we'll catch you on the next one.